Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an infinite tower equation. We have y to the power y to the power y, so on and so forth. This goes on forever. Equals x. And we're going to be solving for y values. We're also going to be looking at this from different angles. We'll talk about the intervals, the convergence, you know, so on and so forth. So let's start by saying that this expression, the y to the y to the y, so on and so forth, is not always going to converge. Anyway, so let's just assume that this converges, and in this case, notice that we have an exponential tower, an infinite exponential tower, and the whole thing is equal to x. If you just focus on the exponent, by the way, when I write y to the y to the y, this does not mean y to the y and then that raised to the power y because these two things are different if you had to use parentheses obviously you would use it like this but that's not necessary most of the time it's understood and this expression can actually be written as y to the power y squared because y times y is multiplied make sense so since the whole thing is contained in the exponent if the whole thing is c converges to x then this expression will also converge to x then we get another equation, which we'll look at it, uh, you know, look at from different angles. This gives us y to the x equals x. Let's go ahead and uh, natural log both sides because we are going to do a little bit of calculus to understand what's going on with this type of function. So let's go ahead and natural log both sides. That's basically going to give us ln y to the x equals ln x. Of course, in order to be able to do that, we need to make some assumptions like y to the x is positive or x is positive, which are equal by the way. So now we can go ahead and move the x to the front. That gives us x ln y under certain conditions equals ln x. And then from here, our goal should be to solve for y because we're going to be differentiating it. Let's go ahead and isolate ln y from here. That can be written as ln x over x. Great. Now, at this point, we can go ahead and do e to the power of both sides, and that gives us y equals e to the power ln y, by the way. So this gives us e to the power ln x over x. Now, this is nice because we can definitely go ahead and differentiate this using properties of uh, derivatives. But uh, if we try to exponentiate, uh, if we try to differentiate the original expression, that would be hard. We could still use implicit differentiation, but when the variable and the base are both, when the base and the exponent are both variables, particularly, uh, well, when they're both variables, then differentiation is harder unless you use the exponential function. Anyways, that's what we did. And now let's go ahead and differentiate it using e to the power u. It's just going to be the same thing multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is the derivative of the exponent. In this case, there will be ln x over x. So if you differentiate by using the quotient rule, that will be the derivative of ln x times x minus the derivative of x, which is 1, times ln x, and that will be divided by x squared. And of course, our goal is always setting this equal to 0. If y prime is 0, of course, e to the ln x over x cannot be 0 even for complex values of x. So from here, we get the following. 1 minus ln x over x squared is 0. And this just means ln x equals 1. Of course, x should not be 0 in this case. And from here, we get x equals e. Great. So for x equals e, we have a, a critical point. And let's go ahead and make a table. Uh, we're going to make a table with rows for x, uh, y prime, and y. And then we have a critical value, which is at e. So this is e, and this is where the derivative changes sign. And if you look at it carefully, because of the presence of 1 minus ln x, if x is greater than e, ln x will be greater than 1, and 1 minus ln x is going to be negative. So here we have a negative sign, and here we have a positive sign, which means for y, if y prime is positive on an interval, then y should be increasing, otherwise it's going to be decreasing. Of course, it could also be constant, but it doesn't happen because we don't have y prime being zero on an interval. That happens sometimes with absolute values, by the way, and not for these kinds of equations. So we have a max at x equals e, 
and the maximum value is given by f at e. So if, what do I mean by f? If f of x is e to the power ln x over x, by the way, this is something else, but we'll talk about it in a little bit, f of e would be e to the power ln e over e, which is e to the power 1 over e, because ln e is, as you know, equal to 1, right? So, in fact, we could safely say that y to the x equals x results in y equals f of x, which is x to the power 1 over x. And the maximum value for y in this case is e to the power 1 over e as given by this table, okay? So, and this happens for x equals e. For example, what does this mean? This means that suppose we have y equals root 2, okay? Let's go ahead and take a look at it because this is an interesting case, a very, very interesting case, by the way. I don't think there's another case like this, but anyways, I could be wrong. Square root of 2 to the power square root of 2 to the power square root of 2 goes on forever. Set it equal to x, just like the original equation. From here, you realize that, okay, this whole thing is also x, so square root of 2 to the power x equals x. Now, if you think about it, this can be written as 2 to the power 1 half to the power x equals x. And then if you raise both sides to the power 1 over x and put the x's on the left, you get x to the power 1 over x equals 2 to the power 1 half, which should imply that x equals 2, at least, right? Well, that seems to be one of the solutions because if you look at this equation very carefully, you realize that, okay, x equals 4 is also a solution. But don't get me wrong, it's not the solution for the original infinite tower, it's just a solution for this particular equation that we got by doing some substitutions. So, hmm, we have two values for an expression? No, not really. Actually, if you think about it, you'll see that only one of them will converge and will, I'll just give you the intervals. But if you also think about this function in general, y equals x to the power 1 over x, which is an interesting function, by the way. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some limit values. For example, if x approaches 0, of course, from the right, then x to the power 1 over x is just going to approach 0. And then if you take the limit as x approaches infinity, then this will actually approach 1, which indicates that y equals 1 is a horizontal asymptote, okay? So our function is going to get closer and closer and closer to this vertical line. I mean the horizontal line, that's what I meant. And that'll be the horizontal asymptote. And I'll show you the graph. I believe I included it in here. But let me just tell you real quick that this infinite power, infinite power converges, converges for x values that are between these two. And of course, the value that it converges to needs to be between e to the power negative e and e to the power 1 over e. So that's our maximum value if you think about it. y always needs to be less than or equal to that. What happens if y exceeds that value? We'll talk about it. By the way, square root of 2, which we found to be convergent uh, or just used as an example, is actually less than e to the power 1 over e because square root of 2 is roughly 1.41 and e to the power 1 over e happens to be about 1.44. Now, what happens if y is greater than e to the power 1 over e? I, well, it looks like I forgot to include that, but <laughs> if you get y greater than e to the power 1 over e, then your values is going to diverge. You can go out and test a value, something that is greater than 1.44, maybe something like 1.5. You can try to stack them like this, 1.5 to the power, 1.5 to the power, 1.5. Try a couple of these, or even use a 2 if you want, and you're going to realize that you hit a really large, large value super duper quick. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, Nick. Take care, and... Bye-bye.